While this project is looking for the general significance of the Jewish people in colonial America and their experience, there are many pathways that could be followed once some of the following questions are answered. Where did they immigrate from? Why did they immigrate? Where did they land? Um, how do they participate in colonial life? Were they isolated, active, reclusive? What trades were they known for? Uh, the Jewish people's presence in any place or time holds significance, either for the larger story of the Jewish people and their ultimate return to Israel, or to the impact they have on the population they engage with along the way. What is the overall question? How do the Jewish colonial immigrants fit in uh, overall in the revolutionary period narrative? This is an important question because you have to have a clear understanding of social, cultural, and ethnic composition of a new country's his, uh, history. And as it forms, so if you want to understand what's going on with the formation, its further growth, its progression, societally, culturally, politically, and governmentally. While the Jewish contribution to the founding of this nation is rarely described in any detail, its presence is mentioned somewhat frequently. Therefore, the research presumes there is significance in the Jewish presence in colonial America. The research limitations are first and foremost religion and ethnicity. The story will, or the study rather, will consider both religious Jews and ethnic Jews. This, of course, presumes that the latter was more than an anomaly at the time. Uh, secondary limitations are time, since this is a look at the founding of the country, the starting time frame of roughly 1650 to 1850, the period often ascribed to the First and Second Awakening. This time frame is then narrowed down to 1740 to 1790. This is the period of the revolution itself and the uh, constitutional ratification. And the location, uh, while the extent of migration includes the breadth of the West Atlantic, the focus is specifically on North America, continental British colonies. Uh, the limitations also include uh, specific to the class time we have available to do the project and the limited access to primary sources due to the researcher's uh, location. The primary method of the research is textual analysis of the available materials for both primary and secondary, and mainly subject-specific books, journal articles, and academic dissertations. The Jewish population was less than 1% of the colonial population. In 1790, there were between 1,300 and 2,500 Jews in colonial America. So, some estimates go as high as 3,000. Colonial America at the time had a total population of approximately 3 million people. Overall, Jews were disproportionately scrutinized. Uh, Anti-Semitism was commonplace in the colonies. There's evidence of period vandalism in Jewish cemeteries in all five colonies. Um, anti-Semitic language was ingrained in the cultural vocabulary of the colonies, uh, though notably not nearly as much as it was in England. By and large, the Jewish community tried to keep a relatively low-key presence. Uh, buildings were not marked with Star of David uh, or in Hebrew, and the people did not advertise their being Jewish with religious regalia or speech in public. Most early Jewish immigrants chose to come to the colonies for financial opportunities um, and the possibility of becoming English citizens through naturalization uh, over time here in the colonies. Uh, it was much more likely that they could achieve citizenship here than it would in England. There were predominantly two Jewish groups migrating to the colonies, the Ashkenazim, German-speaking, uh, generally Orthodox Jews from the Germanic states migrating through Northern Europe and in through England. Often they would stop for a period in England, conduct business, and then later move on to the colonies. Uh, and the Sephardim, 
the Portuguese and Spanish speaking Jews from Southern Europe and the West Indies and Caribbean region. Uh, they were much less orthodox, particularly when it came to food. The Jewish population settled predominantly in five areas. Uh, New Amsterdam, which of course becomes New York, uh, Newport in Rhode Island, Charleston in South Carolina, Savannah, Georgia, and Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. The New York colony had the largest Jewish population in the colonies in 1790. The Jewish community was nearly a 50-50 split between revolutionary and British loyalist sympathies. And there were two large immigration bursts in the colonial period. Uh, in 1640, a large group came from Amsterdam. And in 1654, a group from Dutch Brazil. The Newport Jewish community was well established before being officially recognized. In 1654, the first Jews arrived. It's unclear whether they came from Barbados or Dutch Brazil. Uh, but in 1677, the community purchased land for a burial ground. And in 1680, they established a school. The community wasn't officially recognized until June 24th of 1640, excuse me, 1684, when the governor tried to seize land from two Jewish men. The colonial legislature overturned the governor's decision and the case was recorded in the colony's files. The Newport Jewish community, like the New York community, was also 50-50 split between revolutionary and loyalist sympathies. Charleston's Jewish community was decisively sympathetic to the revolution. They were also the second largest Jewish community in the colonies. Uh, the Carolina colony also had the distinction of having the only colonial founding document, the fundamental constitution of Carolina, to expressly include the Jews under its freedom of religion clause. Uh, a part of that clause reads, Jews, heathens, and other dissenters from the purity of the Christian religion. So they were expressly uh, mentioned by name. The Jews are likely to have been among the earliest colonists of Carolina, uh, and they likely came from Barbados with their Christian Barbadian brothers. Savannah's Jewish community was also decisively sympathetic to the revolution. In 1722 to 1723, after some organizational, uh, financial, and preferential treatment shenanigans during the chartering of the colony, the ship William and Sarah, with 42 Jews on board, set sail for the Savannah colony. For a brief period after the William and Sarah had arrived, the 40, uh, 42 Jews aboard made up a full one quarter of the approximately 160 or so colonists remaining in Savannah due to severe illness. <clears throat> However, this didn't last long. After a while, some tensions caused uh, or arose due to the shenanigans previously mentioned. This caused the Jews to self-isolate somewhat and with the outbreak of war with Spain, many of the Savannah Jews fled to Charleston. Philadelphia, the first known Jew to arrive, was from Italy between 1710 and 1715. This was Isaac Morand. After a while, he moved to Lancaster. Um, these were the two centers of the Jewish community in Pennsylvania. Isaac was having difficulty assimilating and eventually converted to Christianity, though this really didn't ease any of his assimilation problems. The provincial secretary, James Logan, referred to Isaac as the apostate Jew and as a fashionable Christian. He was never really truly accepted as a Jew or as a Christian. The story of Isaac Morand is somewhat telling of the general treatment of the Jewish communities in the colonies. 
they were generally not accepted fully into the community, although they were not treated as bad as Catholics. The Germanic Jews were generally wealthier than the Sephardic Jews, so in the south they could fit in to some degree among the provincial gentry. The uh, Sephardics from Barbados could also fit in with a degree of acceptance among the southern gentry, primarily because they were coming from the same place some of their other uh, wealthier people were coming from. Jews in the north tended to find things more difficult. Uh, wealthy Jews might have been able to fit in a little more easily. Uh, they generally tended to be merchants or involved in import and export. Some Jews found themselves able to buy land speculatively and sell it later. Now, this was mostly in Carolina. While the Jewish population was small, again less than 1%, they did manage to petition for citizenship frequently. Uh, they did not always, however, obtain it. This project's intention was to get a general idea of who the Jewish population in the colonies was, and it achieved that. Uh, it also made it very clear that there is much more to the story of Jews in colonial America and early America. Thank you for watching this presentation.